Good morning. The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. Okay, so today we're going to be reviewing for the test tomorrow on chapter two plus section 8.4. And as I mentioned before, tomorrow there will be no official class meeting at 1030. If you show up for a Zoom meeting, you'll see a sign that says no, no class, just take your test. You'll need to complete your test by tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. And a few things to remind you about the test. So once you open the test, the time will start. I believe you have 75 minutes. So don't wait to the last minute to start. Also, as you're taking your test, keep track of the problems that you missed. Once you've completed your test and uh, time has run out, or maybe it even hasn't run out, if you want to email me the work for the problems that you missed, I will look at them to see if I can give you some partial credit. Now, the mistake that people make is they don't listen to what I'm gonna say right now. Send in your work that led to the wrong answers. If you correct your work and send it in, I'm not even gonna look at it. What I'm looking for is, did you have some somewhat of an idea of how to do it correctly, even though you got the wrong answer? send those only. If you send in corrected work, not, that's not what I'm looking for, okay? You don't need to send the whole test, just the ones that you missed. Okay, anyway, so I have a question here. This is from the chapter two review, and this is number 30, let's see, what is it here? 36. Okay, it says solve the inequality, write the solution set in interval notation. We have zero less than or equal to three minus two X less than 20. So we have three parts to this inequality. Whatever we do to one part, we have to do to all three parts. Okay, by three parts, there's the left end, the right end, and the middle as well. Okay, so we want to isolate the variable, just plain old x in the middle. First of all, I'm going to subtract three from each piece. This gives me negative three, less than or equal to negative two x, less than 17. Next, I'm going to divide each piece by negative two. On the left, this gives me three halves. In the middle, I get x. On the right end, I get 17, or excuse me, negative 17 over two. But because I divided by a negative number, I'm gonna change the direction of both inequalities, okay? But now I have a statement that goes from largest to smallest, and it needs to go from smallest to largest. So I'm not gonna switch the signs. I'm basically gonna turn the whole thing around. So it should look like this. So there's the answer in just regular notation. Now, what would that look like in interval notation? You'd have parentheses, negative 17 halves, comma, three halves, bracket. The fact that it does not include the equal sign here is why we use parentheses. The fact that it does use the equal sign there is why we use brackets. So if it doesn't include equals, you use parentheses. If it does include them, you use brackets. All right, now the graph, what would the graph look like? Okay, so we're gonna have what? Zero and three halves and negative 17 halves, parentheses here, bracket there, line segment in between. Now, on the particular graph, and I'm gonna show you that here, in just a second. So here is 
the uh, web assigned answer. Notice, okay, um, on the left side, negative 17 halves, which is what? Negative eight and a half. So the scale, each hash mark is one unit. The big ones are two units, but the little ones are one unit. So negative eight and then halfway between negative eight, negative nine. So there's negative eight and a half or negative 17 halves, okay? But it's a parentheses because it doesn't include that endpoint. And then over here, three halves, which is like one and a half. So halfway between one and two, it does have brackets. It does include the endpoint. I want to remind you that WebAssign does not handle mixed numbers. So if in your answer, you put negative eight and a half comma one and a half, it would mark it wrong. It doesn't recognize mixed numbers. So be careful with that. Okay. Anyway, any questions about that particular problem? All right. The other request that came in was to have uh, a more extensive discussion, I believe we had one yesterday, but a more extensive discussion about when to use brace, uh, brackets, when to use parentheses, when to use negative infinity, when to use positive infinity, okay? And so, as I just talked about here, the when to use the brackets and when to use the parentheses, we'll look at some more examples of that. Let's say that after solving an inequality, I have the following, okay? So x is greater than negative two and less than four. So you'd have parentheses at both ends of the interval because you're not including equals to, okay? Now, suppose we had this situation. Whoops, hang on here. Where x was greater than or equal to negative two and less than or equal to four. So here, we would have brackets on both ends of the interval. Any questions about those two examples? Okay. Let's say we have negative two less than x less than or equal to four. So here, parentheses on the left, bracket on the right, not including equals on the left, including equals on the right, negative two less than or equal to x less than four. Here, we would have that. Again, when it includes equals, you have brackets. When it does not include them, you have parentheses. Any questions about those examples? No. Okay, now let's talk about when you use, yeah. okay, when you use positive and negative infinity. Let's say I have x less than or equal to 14. Okay, so that means, in fact, let's look at the graph of this thing. Uh, hang on here. Okay. So let x is less than or equal to, so it's everything to the left of, everything less than or equal to. So we're going to the left forever. Well, to the left forever is negative infinity. I would never put brackets on negative or positive infinity because there isn't a specific number that's negative infinity. That's just a concept, the idea that it goes in a certain direction forever, okay? Let's say I had this situation, x is greater than four, okay? So here I'm gonna have parentheses at four with an arrow going to the right. So this interval starts right after four and goes to positive infinity. Now I put the negative sign in front of the in negative infinity. I don't need to put a plus sign in front of a positive infinity, just like you don't need a plus sign in front of four, okay? Are you okay with those examples? Yes. All right. Yes. Let's say we have an answer that ends up being all real numbers. Then that would look like this. All right. Does that cover what you needed for that 
situation or do you want more examples? If you want more examples, let me know and I will do more examples. No, I think I got it. Just the question, how do you graph the um, fractions on the graph line? Very carefully. And <laughs> so, so what you have to do with that, and this is where I understand why they do it, but it makes it harder for the students. I wish that they would have a, a scale on the graph that was appropriate for what the correct answer would be. But I guess in a sense that kind of tips their hand and gives you a clue as to what the answer is. But let's say for instance, we have an answer where uh, let's negative two, and this is gonna be uh, 16 thirds, okay? So then interval notation, would look like that, okay? Now, 16 thirds, 16 divided by three is five and one third. Now, again, I don't wanna put five and one third in the interval, but let's say we're gonna graph this thing, okay? Let's see, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, We'll extend this out a little bit, six, okay? So it's easy to identify where negative two is. It's not so easy to identify where 16 thirds is or five and a third. So I have to come over here to five, and then I'm gonna guesstimate, estimate, where is a third of the way between five and six? So probably about right there. Now, I've noticed that in WebAssign, if it's a fraction like that, if you're fairly close, it marks it correct. If you're off, it marks it wrong. But you have to kind of guesstimate where it is, okay? Now, if you put it at just at five or at five and maybe three fourths or, fourths or something, it's gonna mark it wrong. So it doesn't have to be exact, but it has to be fairly close. So what you've gotta do is kind of in your mind, you know, estimate where a third is or two thirds or a quarter or whatever, but that's a little bit tricky, okay? So again, be careful, be sure to pay attention to what the scale is. Sometimes the scale is every, uh, every hash mark is labeled with one unit. Uh, sometimes it's every two units, sometimes it's five, pay attention to the scale. I think the biggest problem that students have with these, with these type of situations is they don't really think through what the scale is and how that's gonna affect their answer, okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I know it's, it's tricky. Uh, I'm not crazy about it, but, but that's, that's what it is. All right, um, so do either of you have any other questions that you'd like me to deal with specifically before I kind of just do a general quick review? Um, I just need a refresher on what we did in the beginning of it. I kind of got stumped on questions 14 and 15 on the review. So I just kind of need a refresher of what I'm supposed to do because my brain just kind of blanked. Okay, <laughs> hang on a second. Let's see here. Uh, okay. You said 14 and 15 on the review. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that up here so I can look at it and then we'll talk about it. Huh. Okay, so this is the chapter two review. And this is, you said 14 and 15? Yes. Okay, here's number 14. It says, solve the equation check the result. If there is no solution, enter no solution. If all real numbers are solutions, enter reals. Okay, so here's our equation. Five times the quantity, two x minus seven minus five x equals zero. So on the left side of the equation, starting inside the grouping symbol, 2x minus seven, we can't do anything in there. They are not like terms. 
So we're forced to distribute the five. Five times two X is 10 X. Five times a minus seven is minus 35. Then we bring down the minus five X equals zero. Next, we're gonna combine like terms. 5x, excuse me, 10x minus 5x is 5x. So 5x minus 35 is zero. So far, so good? Okay. Yes. Then we're going to add 35 to both sides to isolate the variable term. Divide both sides by 5 to isolate the variable. Now we're going to go back and check our work. So we're gonna take the original equation, except that every time X appears, we're going to replace it with a seven. Now simplifying the arithmetic, inside the parentheses, two times seven is 14. 14 minus seven is seven. Five times seven is 35 minus five times seven minus 35. 35 minus 35 is zero. Zero equals zero. So the solution checks. Are we okay with that situation? Yes. Okay. Let's take a look at number 15. Again, it says solve the equation, check the result. If there's no solution, write no solution. If there's all real numbers, write reals we have an equation containing several fractions. So to clear the fractions, we need to determine the least common denominator of four, two, and five. The prime factorization of four is two times two or two squared. The prime factorization of two is just two because two is a prime number. The prime factorization of five is just five because five is a prime number. The least common denominator is the product of the highest power of each different prime factor. So the highest power of two is two squared. The highest pow power of five is just five to the one power. So two squared times five, which is four times five or 20, that is our least common denominator. Any question how I found that? No. So now we're going to come back to this equation and we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 20 or 20 over 1. Distributing on the left side, 20 over 1 times 3 fourths. The 20 over 4 is 5 over 1. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 over one is just 15. On the right side of the equation, distributing, we get one half times 20 over one plus D over five times 20 over one. One half times 20 over one, the 20 over two reduces to two over one. One times 10 is 10, 10 over one is 10. D over five times 20 over one, 20 over five is four over one. D times four is four D divided by one is still four D. So now we've cleared out the fractions. We have a new equivalent equation, meaning it has the same solution as the original equation. So now we'll go back and isolate the variable term and then isolate the variable. Now let's check our work. See if I've got enough room here to put it in here. Three fourths equals one half plus five fourths over five. Okay, so I put the five fourths in the one place that the variable was in the original equation. So I get three fourths equals one half plus. Well, five fourths divided by five is like five fourths divided by five is like five fourths times one over five. Remember, dividing by a number is like multiplying by its reciprocal, but this reduces down to one fourth. 
So we've got three fourths equals one half plus one fourth. Okay. Well, one half, if I multiplied it by two over two, wouldn't that be two fourths? Is everybody okay with that? Yes, yeah, sorry. So what have I, I just wanna make sure you're following. So three fourths equals two fourths plus one fourth. Well, isn't two fourths plus one fourth? Ah. Two fourths plus one fourth is three fourths. So it checks, all right? Any other questions you wanna look at? Karina, anything else from your chapter review or? Um, I think it was the following question after this one. Um, the 16? 16? Yes. Okay. It says, solve the equation, check the result. If no solution, write no solution. If all reals, write reals. It was five times the quantity. Let's see here. Uh, four minus C all over four equals negative two times the quantity two C plus one all over five, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is clear the fractions. The least common denominator of four and five is 20. Is everybody okay with where I got the 20 or do, not, do I need to go through the process? No, that's fine. Uh, that's where I got confused. I was like, was I supposed to find the the least common denominator or not? <laughs> well, it would make life easier if you did it that way. Okay. So we'll go, we'll go with yes. So 20 here and 20 there. Now, what do I got? My first term on the left, I've got 20 times the quantity, five times the quantity, four minus C all over four. I could reduce this 20 and this four to a five over one. What that would give me is five times five times four minus C all over one, which would give me 25 times four minus C, which would give me 100 minus 25 C. On the right side of the equation, 20 over five is four over one, which then gives me four times negative two times two C plus one all over one, which is like four times negative two or negative eight times two C plus one, which is like negative 16 C minus eight. So I've cleared the fractions and then distributed, multiplied, done whatever else was necessary to simplify each side of the equation. Before we go on and finish it, any question about any of the steps? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put all of the C's on the left side of the equation. So I'm gonna add 16 C to both sides. So I get 100 minus nine C equals negative eight. Let's see, is that right? Okay. We could have added 25C as well, right? Sure, let's do it this way. Now, I know why you prefer that because you wanna have a positive coefficient in front of your variable, right? Right. And you can do it either way. Yeah, we'll do it this way instead. So now I'm gonna have 9C minus eight. Notice on the other side, it was negative 9C. But if I moved it over, you know, it would have made it positive. So yeah, you can solve for the variable on either side of the equation. With an inequality, I highly recommend that ultimately you put it on the left side. But okay. with just an equation, it doesn't matter. So then I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Let's see here. So I've got 108 equals 9C. I'll divide by 9, which goes in, what, 12 times? So C equals 12, okay? Now, to check my work, let's see here. 
I'm going to recopy this equation, but I'm going to replace the C's with 12. So I'm going to get this. 5 times 4 minus 12 all over 4 equals negative 2 times 2 times 12 plus 1 all over 5. Okay. So then I've got five times, this is, let's see, four minus 12 is negative eight. Two times 12 is 24. Five times negative eight is negative 40. 20, 24 plus one is 25. Let's see, negative 40 over four is negative 10. 25 over 5 is 5 over 1. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So the solution checks. Be careful. A mistake I've seen people make is they check their work and then they say, oh, the answer is negative 10. No, the answer was 12. The fact that when we put 12 back into the equation, we got negative 10 equals negative 10 shows that it's true. But the negative 10 is not the solution. Okay, so be careful there. All right, what else? Any others you want to look at? No. Okay, well, let's see. Um, just a reminder, and I think we covered one of these earlier, that if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, change the direction of the inequality. Uh, Again, if, you, if a parentheses means you don't include something, brackets means you do include an, in, an, an endpoint. Uh, let's see, if anything else I wanna highlight. Um, you're allowed to use a scientific calculator, okay? Let's see, what else? Oh, um, solving formulas. Again, make sure that you don't change the case of the variable. So like if it gives you a, a problem, uh, A equals, if capital A equals lowercase b plus lowercase c, and it sends to so, it says solve for c. So you subtract b from both sides and you write a minus b equals c. Well, it's gonna mark it wrong because that's not the same as that. So keep the same case, uh, capital letters or lowercase letters, okay? Uh, let's see. That's all I can think of. If you don't have any other questions, we'll call it quits. I'll be back at 115 if you change your mind about anything. Uh, otherwise, oh, you can take the test anytime. So if you're ready, you can take it today. You don't have to wait till tomorrow, but you do have to finish it by tomorrow night at 1159. So, uh, oh, I see there's something in the chat. And as I mentioned way back at the first day of class, I don't usually have time to look there, but let me look and see what it says. That was me. Uh, I see that. Yes. Okay. Good, 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 good. So we covered that. All right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording.